All right, so this is me again for another video. As I promised in the last one, I will review my uh, weighted vest. But uh, something else came up, something which I purchased a short while ago. And I thought I'd rather review that instead. And that's basically lifting hooks. Now, most of you obviously know what lifting hooks are. It's uh, supposed to help you to lift a heavier weight than you can usually manage probably in deadlifts most commonly used or even with chin-ups the reason why I got my set and I've got them over here the reason why I got it is basically I wanted to do dead hangs I felt I needed a good stretch for my lats basically and I figured you know what better than to hang from a bar the problem obviously was that uh, I lacked the grip strength I just couldn't hang long enough to feel the stretch. Now I know most people say, oh, obvious, you know, what you need to do, you need to be working on your grip strength. Now, that's easier said than done because when you look at something like the deadlift, for example, I'm sure a lot of people can pull a lot more than their grip allows. I mean, the time when I was deadlifting before my injury, um, I could deadlift up to 500 pounds easily. Problem is, these ones didn't really help because once I hit about 440 pounds, I just couldn't hold onto the bar anymore. What I would have to do, I would have to use a mixed grip. Sometimes that would allow me to hold the bar, but I mean, if you can get like two reps out of it, it wasn't really useful when I was aiming for at least five with that weight as my fingers would slowly start opening as the bar was pressing down. So uh, one could argue, okay, just work out with the 440 until your grip is strengthened enough until you get to the 500. Sorry, I was distracted for a moment. Um, yeah, so, I mean, if you think about it, to increase your grip strength by 60, 60 pounds, how long would that take if you worked out religiously? I'm not sure. I mean, when I was doing lockouts in the in the power rack, I would use 600 pounds. So that means I'm about 200 pounds short in grip strength to do those lockout, those deadlift lockouts. Now, how long will it take you to gain the grip strength to get to 200 pounds? It will take forever. Maybe it will take two years, five years. So for all that time, I'm working out with 400 pounds, 440 pounds. Whereas I could do my lockout with 600 pounds. I mean, that makes absolutely no sense. So for those who say, oh, you shouldn't use lifting strap, you shouldn't use hooks, that is nonsense. This is the equivalent of saying to those same people, don't use a lifting belt. You know what, if you can't manage it, just wait until you get strong enough and you can handle that. They don't accept that, but they give you the advice about the grip strength. So as far as I'm concerned, these things are, designed for a reason, it might not work as well as it, it ought to, but uh, in the right hands to the right person, it might be a benefit. So uh, this is the one I bought, this is not a review of the brand, and this is a weightlifting strap, I'll just show you. This is, this is what the hook looks like now. There we go. So it's a nicely padded part that I'll just put it around that goes around your wrist uh, and you tighten it and that's what the hook looks like. So that's the hook, that's the hook. Important, I want you to see where this part is sitting. As you can see, this is sitting right here at my wrist. So if any weight is gonna be applied, it's not gonna be on my wrist because clearly the skin is not gonna handle any significant amount of weight it will slide down eventually until it rests on your hand basically here on your thin and hypothena eminence that's where it's going to get stuck which is below the level of your wrist now that's something important to keep in mind the other thing i wanted to point out was you can see the position of my hand now the the idea is this this easily slides into the bar and there you go but there are a few problems with that and I'm sure anybody who tries it out will discover it for themselves. 
as soon as they put on a little bit more weight than what they used to. Firstly, I mean, this thing is quite well made. It's sturdy. I mean, when they advertise this thing, they say, oh, it's made from such solid steel, probably rated up to, I don't know, a thousand pounds or what. And it makes you think, oh, wow, this is for me, you know? Imagine how strong I can be. Unfortunately, I don't think it lives up to the hype. I mean, well done. Nice rubberized coating so you don't go scratching things. Although I did manage to scratch the bars in the, the kiddies park where I used to go and do my pull-ups. I felt a bit bad about that. Hope it doesn't rust. But uh, yeah, I just don't use them anymore. I'll give you the reasons for that now. All right, so the first reason I would say is just the way this thing aligns with a bar. I mean, anybody who holds a bar, right? We know that at no point ever are your hands this straight. Naturally, when you start, when your grip starts slipping, we tend to use these these out of ones here, up to your pinky. That's that's where a lot of the strength lies. We don't grip just with these two. I mean, we shift the weight naturally, and to do that, to evenly distribute it, we start rotating our hands just slightly on the bar. Even though it's a straight bar, your hands slightly start rotating because you need to accommodate that. Rotating not just this way, but also you get that slight ulnar deviation, which was happened. Now, when you have something straight as this, and you start doing that, then you're loading one edge of this thing. And you really have to try it to see that somehow it just doesn't feel right. And uh, I think it's even worse when you're doing push pull-ups, when you're hanging from the bar, your, your wrist naturally want to rotate. I mean, very little motion, but just enough so you don't have the discomfort in your joints and just the hooks do not allow you to do that because it's hooked on. And it cannot move, it's steel. It's not designed to move or to budge. So uh, from a comfort point of view, I think this thing is just not what I wanted. I mean, I've used lifting straps before when I had to do my, my lockouts and you cannot beat lifting straps. I'll speak about the lifting straps a little bit later because I found it quite interesting, just the physics behind it. How do lifting straps allow you to lift more? I mean, we all know you wrap it around, you lift more, but what's the reason for it? So I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. As I mentioned earlier, where this thing rests, the padding, it rests there. Once you start pulling, the weight starts pulling, it starts sliding and that's where it will stop, right below your wrist. Now, if you look at your position of your hand, that is the position that the hook is going to allow you to be in. Which brings us to another important principle, the principle of uh, irradiation. Now, anybody who's been into training, they've heard of irradiation. That is basically the spread of muscular activation from a specific point. So for example, you're doing a biceps curl and you are struggling and to get the last rep out when you squeeze that bar really hard, that is what allows you to get that last rep. And that is irradiation because by activating the muscles, supporting it in, in addition to other things, you increase that output to that muscle, the recruitment of that, and it allows you to do more than you otherwise could have. Even if you contract your back or your shoulders, you're bracing to do that curl, that allows you to get that extra bit of strength. So it's a type of synergism that we're dealing with. So uh, this thing does not allow you to do that because your hand remains in that position. Now, I mean, you can try this for yourself. You can keep your hand open like that. You can tense your forearm. Yeah, I maybe mean, you can see the tendons are contracting a bit. I'm not sure if you can see that well, but when you make a fist, look at the difference. That's a hook. I tense it a little bit, close. That's what happens. So when you close your fist around something, which is what a lifting strap allows you to do, and you can squeeze that bar, you increase your strength, your wrist there, your forearms, your lats, everything allows you to be stronger. But okay, in my case, I wasn't trying to be strong. I was trying to just grab the thing and just hang there and give my lats a good stretch. But even then, the gripping strength becomes important because I was managing, well, I was training outdoors, winter, wearing my snow boots, my jacket, so probably about 200 pounds together. Um, and I was managing maybe 25 seconds 
and then I just couldn't hang anymore. Enough to tie out my grip, but useless for a leg stretch. It was just starting to stretch, just starting to relax, and it simply wasn't good enough. That's why I got these babies, but they just didn't do it for me. This brings me to the second point. The whole point, if, if, you, if you look at rest and rest stability, it's not just ligaments. We never want to focus on ligaments for stability because that's when you're going to run into problems. They are not meant to be stretched. They're supposed to be stabilized. Joints are stabilized by muscles and they are stabilized by the tendons that go, that crosses the, the joint. So you've got our flexor compartment, our extensor compartment. And what they basically do is when they, when you close your fist tightly, you get an isometric contraction, right? So you can see your arm will be contracting. And what that does, tendons on this side and on the posterior side, the dorsal side. So when they contract, they are anchored here, right? Your common extensor and your common flexor origin, or well, what's the other way around, flexor, extensor. That's where they attach, so they are fixed there. So when they contracting and they shortening, they compacting the wrist. So everything on that side is slightly shortened, maybe not perceptibly so, but from a functional point of view, it makes a huge difference. Just be able to contract your fist. It stabilizes your wrist. Whereas with a hook, your hand is in that position. There's no way you can get a strong enough isometric contraction. No matter what you try, because the hand is meant to close when you contract it hard. Now it remains open and it's such a weird feeling. So you do not get that stability. So what happens then? That weight is force is transferred to this part and it's transferred up that way. So if you want to know what it feels like to be crucified, try using this hook. Put it around, put one hand on, and hang from one hand, right? Hang from one hand. Don't, don't use both, just use one. So you can see what I'm talking about. The pain is excruciating. Now this is not a good muscle pain, like, oh yeah, man, I'm, I can do this, you know, I've got to push through the burn. This is pain. This is like when you're trying to do the splits and you have zero flexibility. You cannot push through that pain, you'll be crying. And this is exactly what this thing unfortunately does because you cannot make the fist. It doesn't allow that uh, isometric contraction. It doesn't stabilize, stabilize your wrist to transfer the weight to the muscles and the tendons. Oh no, it's actually quite relaxed. It transfers it to that wrist and it causes distraction at that wrist. And it is insane. So I've got these ones. Well, there's two of them. I bought them. I don't know how much they were, $35, $40 dollars maybe. And uh, yeah, I use them a few times and now they're just lying there. I mean, it's nothing to do with the brand. I'm sure it's very well designed, very strong, nice padding. I wish I had lifting straps with this type of padding. But to me, it sounds great to say, oh, the hooks will always hold so many pounds. How many pounds can your poor wrist hold? The ligaments in your wrist, how many pounds can they? It's not gonna work. So hooks, for me at least, it's a no-go. It's a no-go. If you wanna do something, get yourself a set of lifting straps or follow the advice where they say, work on your grip strength until you're strong enough to allow you to do that thing. And uh, I kind of did that as well. And I got a nice hand gripper and maybe, maybe I'll do that in my next review, you know? Because I bought all this equipment which I thought uh, I wanted to build up a gym, but nothing massive. I got rid of my power, I had a nice power rack. My wife hated it, it was taking up so much space. My rogue power rack, probably the best one there is. I had a ton of weights, but uh, I just didn't have the space. And seeing that I recently moved as well, how do you move a rogue power rack with about 400 pounds of weights? with your whole house and furniture over a distance of about 3,000 kilometers. Mm, that's not gonna work. So I got rid of it and uh, I focused, thought I'll focus on the basics, push-ups, pull-ups, this was supposed to help, didn't. And uh, yeah, for the push-ups, that's for my weighted vest review. I'll get to that later. So uh, for the hooks, from my perspective, this is a no-go. Functionally, it doesn't make sense physiologically, that positioning of that hand, it does not make sense. Your arm is the strongest, your wrist is the most stable when you make a tight fist. And if it doesn't allow you to do that, then there is no point. 
in, in, in doing that or in using it. So what do I use instead now? These are the ones I've been using. I guess this is a known brand. I've seen it in quite a few places and uh, everybody knows how a lifting strap works. Wrap it around, there you go. Wrap it around the bar, drop it. It actually allows you to, to get a close first position and isometrically contract all these muscles. And yeah, your strength is increased. How many times? Well, that's where the equation comes in. So let me get my whiteboard quickly and then I'll show you how it works. I never knew, but I looked this up and it's quite cool when you think about so it. This is the equation I was referring to that tells you how the lifting strap allows you to lift heavier weights. It's called the capstan formula or the belt friction formula or the euler eitelwein equation named after the smart guy who came up with it. Where the load is basically the weight you want to lift and uh, the hold part is uh, how much force needs to be exerted uh, at the end of the rope in order to counteract the weight. And it basically relates to this situation where you have a weight with a rope with a number of windings around a bar and basically how much force is required to hold that in place or how little force is required to hold this in place. Basically the concept which is applied in rock climbing and rappelling and also with pulley systems. In our situation with lifting straps. Now this is a really important bit over here which basically tells us that the tension force in the rope increases exponentially with the number of windings around the pole and this is what we're exploiting with lifting straps so mu here is a coefficient the friction coefficient and uh, this one here refers to the angle or basically the number of windings around the bar or around the pole which is measured in radian so as you see, if you increase the number of windings around the bar, the force here exponentially increases to balance the load on this side. And voila, suddenly you're lifting an extra 200 pounds, which would have taken you probably five years to acquire. So in conclusion, my recommendation is get a set of lifting straps. Um, as you can see, the force was exponentially proportional to the friction coefficient so preferably get a pair that is pretty rough you know so we can stick to the bar obviously if the bar has got that knurled um, pattern of uh, that you which you typically see on an Olympic bar it makes it a lot easier than having a smooth bar and uh, most importantly the number of windings around the bar so this one person, I feel it's a little bit short. I would have liked the straps to be a little bit longer and perhaps even a little thinner this way so I can get more windings without making it too bulky and difficult to grip. But uh, I would say that's my piece of advice. Use the lifting straps and save the hooks for fishing. Alternatively, you can work on your grip strength and this is the one I've been using, so if I get enough likes, subscriptions, I might talk about this one. Obviously a much quicker video because this one is way too long. Thanks. And don't forget to hit the like button. Cheers.